Mike Fetcher is in Saudi Arabia at this hour, and Mike, what can you tell us about what you're hearing and what is going on there? Well, Tom, the air raid uh, warning has gone off. Sirens are blowing. We're getting our gas masks out uh, just in case. Need to screw the uh, canister on here. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what is to come. Uh, there are extremely good air defenses around this area. We hope they are extremely good. Uh, there haven't been any more takeoffs in the last uh, three minutes. And so the entire city right now will be heading towards uh, their underground uh, uh, shelters. Uh, certainly many of our staff should be taking off to those shelters at this very moment. We'll stay here with you as uh, long as we can. Uh, Mike, but let, me, let me just ask you about procedures. Uh, we, do, we don't want you to stay there a moment longer than you feel that you should for your personal safety. What were you told beforehand about what would happen if you heard air raid sirens in the Dharan area? If uh, air raid sirens were sounded, it meant that the city would probably be under attack, uh, that it could be gas, that we should proceed to bomb shelters uh, where we would put on our masks, they would then seal the doors, and uh, we should be in safety there. Uh, and that's the procedure. We'll just have to see what happens. We hear some noise right now. We hear a jet engine. The sirens are still going. Let's listen. As many of you folks as you can should head to the shelter now. Mike, Mike, get Arthur Kent to run up to the Joint Information Bureau. Get Arthur Kent to find out. We just lost Saudi Arabia. That's not an encouraging sign. Uh, we've lost the transmission from Saudi Arabia. Uh, they are at Dahran. It's an air base that's uh, uh, the major, one of the major launching pads for the fighter jets that are in that area. Uh, the Saudis have secured the area. I want to reassure everyone that this could be just a regular interruption on the part of the Saudis. Uh, that is one of the most secure areas that exists in Saudi Arabia. It's um, on the Persian Gulf itself. It's a large complex. That's the place where those American troops were landing. We've had a tactical fighter wing that has been based there as well as ground troops in that area, so we have no reason to be unduly concerned. But uh, prudence, of course, requires people who are on the ground to take whatever precautionary moves that they must at this time, and we trust and pray that they are, and we will be attempting to reestablish contact with them as quickly as we possibly can. NBC's Gary Sick. Uh, He's not NBC, but he is for the moment, and is our, our expert in this area. We were talking just a few moments ago about what you would be telling the president about the political consequences of the potential fallout once the military operation is over, what he should be sensitive to, and the message that he ought to be sending to those parts of the Arab world who are not under attack tonight. I think in the first place, he should, if there was in fact a reason, let's say the Iraqis were arming their missiles or something, that this was a reason for us to go in, then he should obviously stress that. I think he has to stress very much that this is not an attack against the people of Iraq or against the Arabs generally, that it is in fact an attack against specific military targets and to the very best of our ability, that, uh, that will be uh, maintained. How much possible. help can he get from Hafez uh, al-Assad in uh, Syria at this hour, from uh, President Mubarak in Egypt, from King Fahd in Saudi Arabia on that count? Well, the third point that I was going to mention is that he should stress also the fact that we're not in this alone. And I think the presence of even the token part of the Arab uh, forces in this uh, attack would be very, very important from that point of view. How much he can actually count on, of course, Syria has no air forces. Uh, in the battle, I mean, in the in Saudi Arabia. So they're in no position to offer anything at this point. I think what we have to worry about with Assad is a couple of days from now when he judges how the Arab reaction has gone as to whether he'll stick with us or not. And I think it's a very open question. And there's some question about whether he'll even use his troops in this attack. Uh, and that's a concern that Secretary of State Baker had when he was visiting Saudi Arabia just a week ago. You know, the, the thinking was very much that the first phase would be purely air, and that it would probably go on. It's only been underway now for a couple of hours. It will go on at least until midnight Eastern time when daylight begins to break over the area, and then we'll see whether it goes on. That's the first time we're going to get any real indication of how much has been done. All right, can we put up now an electronic map to show you the area of what we think is going on at this hour, and we'll just give you a kind of an evaluation. What you see in the lower right-hand part of your screen is Kuwait, and just below Kuwait is Dahran, where we had that report interrupted just moments ago. 
We believe that the uh, F-15s have left from there and from simple Saudi Arabia going to target somewhere in Iraq. The indications are that the first attacks on the city of Baghdad, the capital of Iraq, were by Tomahawk cruise missiles. We've lost contact now with Tom Aspel, who was our correspondent there, and we have not been able to get back uh, to him since that time. He is at the Al Rashid Hotel. He was looking west to the airport that you can see on the map. Uh, he reported that there were numerous, very large explosions, lots of anti-aircraft fire that had been set off earlier. NBC's Fred Francis was telling us as well that he believes that uh, it may have been a deliberate attempt to get the Saudis to light up their system so we could take a look at their radar. Their radar would guide their missiles as well, and we would want to knock them out so we would knock out effectively their air defense system.